really big news from Pennsylvania. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. I woke up this morning and I told Alexa I was up and Alexa gave me the news brief from Fox News. That's how I have it set up. And the leading news story was about this district court in Pennsylvania, which had thrown out another Trump appeal concerning voter fraud in Pennsylvania. And I said, like, well, you know, more bad news. But then I made my breakfast and I sat down and I ate and I was looking through some things on the internet. I think it was on Twitter. And I saw this post that there'd been this bombshell coming out of Pennsylvania in a court case, a state court case. I thought, well, what the hell is that about? So that's what I tried to figure out. The only thing I could think it could be was the uh, follow-up on the court case earlier in the week in a Pennsylvania court with the judge, uh, Patricia McCullough was her name. And I remember reading about her decision in that case where she didn't toss it out and she was going to have another hearing on Friday. I said, it's got to be that because yesterday was Friday. So I went and I Googled Patricia McCullough, Pennsylvania, and sure enough, up came the website, links her to her, the uh, court consolidated Pennsylvania court system or whatever it's called. And I went there and I started looking for something with a November 27th name on it, because most of the cases are case numbers and things like that. I didn't really know which one was which, but there was only one with the 27 November date, which was indeed Friday. So I figured I'd look at that. And bingo. That was it. Just a little background. Everybody's focused on the Trump campaign and their claims about voter fraud and the claims that they're making, which basically changed the procedures outlined in Act 77, which is the controlling Pennsylvania statute for elections, which said that votes, absentee votes, mail-in votes had to come in by the time the polls closed on Tuesday, which was eight o'clock in Pennsylvania. And the Supreme Court had said, no, they only had to be postmarked by election day and they could arrive as late as Friday. And that went up to the Supreme Court, which bounced it back. But Judge Alito issued a ruling that they had to keep any of the votes that came in after election day separate, segregated or whatever they called them. And that's the one that these elements of these cases, the fraud, and the change in the election date by not the legislature, which is what the Constitution says controls election processes, but by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. It's all about, and that's where they've been running into problems. But there's been another court case from within Pennsylvania. That's the one before Judge McCullough. The court case before Judge McCullough doesn't involve voter fraud. It doesn't involve the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. It's something wholly other. And the mainstream media is, not surprisingly, pretty much ignoring it. The claim there is a simple one, but it's a huge one. And that's why this decision by Judge McCullough to allow it to proceed is so huge. The court case being brought by a bunch of petitioners from inside Pennsylvania, not directly or you know, related to the Trump campaign, is that Act 77, the electoral law in Pennsylvania, which is the one that's the focus of a lot of the attention, is itself unconstitutional. And the argument they made is pretty simple and pretty direct. And that's what Judge McCullough ultimately said. What in allowing this to go forward is she believes they have a good case and that it's likely to prevail. What is the argument that they're making? The argument's a pretty simple one. The Pennsylvania Constitution states, uh, it's Article 7, Section 14, that there are provisions for absentee ballots. There are basically four provisions. You can request an absentee ballot if you're going to be overseas. You know, you're in the military, you're working for a foreign corporation in South Korea, you can't get back to vote. That's one. Two, you're disabled. You know, you're paralyzed. <laughs> you can't get to vote. You have to vote by mail. It's a religious holiday or thing. Uh, the election falls on a religious holiday. You're not allowed to leave the house or 
do something, or use a machine. I don't know what it is. They, they don't really specify. But you can claim a religious exemption and ask for a mail-in uh, absentee ballot. The fourth reason you request an absentee ballot is if you're involved in the election procedure. You're an election official in Pennsylvania, and you've got to work all that day, and you're not going to have time. You know, maybe you live in you live in one county, and you you're an election official in another county or something, or a different precinct, and you may not be able to vote because you're going to be so busy. You could ask for an a mail-in ballot, what they call an absentee ballot. That's it. That's what it says. Those are the Constitutionally, those are the only provisions that you can ask for a mail-in ballot. Now, what Act 77 did, and this has nothing to do with coronavirus. This was passed back in 2019, oddly enough, by a Republican Senate and Republican House and signed by the Democratic governor, Wolf. Basically, follows that same procedure for what they call absentee ballots, but adds this new provision for mail-in ballots which don't follow those procedures. So basically, you can request a mail-in ballot for whatever reason you want. Doesn't matter. You don't have to meet one of those four criteria. You can just ask for a mail-in ballot and you'll get one. Now, the key here is you, know, you still have to request it. And in many cases in Pennsylvania, that hasn't been done. They've just been mailing them out. But setting that aside, that's not really germane to this case. You have to you can request a ballot, but you don't have to have any of these reasons. Now, the argument that's being made before, was made before uh, Judge McCullough, was that Act 77 is itself unconstitutional because it basically expands on the ability to get a mail-in ballot beyond, well beyond what the Constitution actually prescribes in Article 7, Section 14. Article 7 governs elections in Pennsylvania. And they're basically asking for all of these mail-in ballots, requested or not, that were requested without reasons as outlined in the old uh, outlines for absentee ballots, to be tossed. All of them because they're all basically, they were all cast unconstitutionally because they argue Act 77 is unconstitutional. Basically, Act 77 amended the state constitution. But there are provisions in the state constitution in Pennsylvania, as there are in all constitutions, for an amendment process. And it's, I won't go through all, it's convoluted. You have to pass it twice, and then it has to be published. And then there's a discussion, and it goes up for a referendum or something in the state. You have to go through this multi-year process to amend the Constitution. They didn't even try to do that. They just amended it on their own. Now, what they were thinking at the time, why nobody said to them, do we have the authority to do this? That's another question. But the problem is, they did it, they passed it, and Governor Wolf signed it, and it became law. And that's the law that they used in this election. And the argument made before McCullough is it's unconstitutional. Act 77 should be struck down. And basically, you would go back to the outlines for mail-in balloting, absentee balloting, as they're called, in the state constitution, which is very restricted. You know, you have these four reasons that you can request an absentee ballot. So basically, any of the absentee ballots should have met those uh, you know, if you're overseas, you're, you're in the military or something, you would meet those requirements for an absentee ballot. But all these requests for mail-in ballots, which were sort of added in Act 77, beyond what the Constitution says, would be in invalid. They'd all be thrown out. All of them. doesn't matter what date they came in, what the postmark was. If these people used a mail-in, non-absentee ballot, or use mail-in ballots but aren't uh, infirm overseas, uh, post-election uh, uh, workers, or, or it was a religious holiday, they're in-ballot ballots, and they would all be thrown out. Now, of course, everybody knows the majority of the people who voted by mail were overwhelmingly Democrats. The people who voted in person were mostly Republicans. So if that was done, it would uh, definitely give the state uh, to Donald Trump. Now, 
Will that be done? In all probability, this is going to go to another Pennsylvania court. It will probably only be good of a Supreme Court. Now, for a Supreme Court to rule in the petitioner's favor would be to basically overturn its own decision, which actually expanded Act 77. So basically what the Supreme Court in Pennsylvania did was to expand for provisions of an unconstitutional act. So I doubt that they're going to find that way. But of course, ultimately, then it would end up at the U.S. Supreme Court. And if you just read the decision from uh, Judge McCullough, which I'll post to in the description, you can read it yourself. It's, I think it's 12 pages long. It's not that all that long. You know, the, the argument is pretty simple. The Pennsylvania Constitution says you can only vote by mail in these four cases. Under Act 77, expanded that broadly without amending the Constitution. In that sense, Act 77 is unconstitutional. And all these mail-in ballots that came in under the Act 77 provisions should be tossed. Now, if it gets to the Supreme Court, you know, what, what are they going to do? I mean, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a judge, but if you just read the argument in Judge McCullough's uh, decision, it looks pretty straightforward. I mean, they clearly amended Act 70, or they clearly amended the state constitution with Act 77, but they never went through the amendment process. So it certainly looks like an unconstitutional provision, but it looks like an open and shut case. Now, if it gets to the Supreme Court, what could they do? They could just declare Act 77 uh, unconstitutional and all the ballots would be thrown out. Or maybe they could say, redo the election. I, I don't know how that's going to turn out. But what's interesting here is that this case really sounds like a strong case because it doesn't get into the complexities of, you know, supervision of ballots or, you know, observers and allegations of fraud and, you know, different interpretations of what was being done or anything like that. You know, this is pretty simple. You have the state constitution, Article 7, Section 14. You have Act 77. Does it, in effect, amend the constitution? And if the answer is yes, it's unconstitutional because you can't amend the constitution by statute. You have to follow an amendment process which was not followed. I mean, it, it, it's pretty simple. So what's going to happen with it, you know, I, I don't know, but it, it certainly looks like a very strong case. And if it ultimately succeeds in either Pennsylvania or ultimately at the Supreme Court or some federal court, if it doesn't get that far, Pennsylvania is going to go to Trump. And, and the shame of it is there, there are a lot of people, I mean, who voted in good faith. I mean, it's not like as if every mail-in ballot was cast in, by fraud. Most of them weren't. Uh, these people's votes are going to be thrown out, all because I would argue the incompetence of a state legislature and the incompetence of a Supreme Court. You know, what the Supreme Court in Pennsylvania should have been saying was, this whole thing's unconstitutional, instead of, oh, let's take this unconstitutional act and make it even worse by expanding, expanding the provisions of it further. Uh, you know, you have to wonder what, you know, uh, sometimes I just feel like I'm so glad I moved away from Pennsylvania because I really wonder if people up there know what the hell they're doing. And I'm not, this isn't partisan. I mean, you have a governor I don't think much of, a Supreme Court, mostly Democrats, I don't think much of. But this is the state legislature. It's controlled by the Republicans now for several years. And I don't think they know what they're doing either. I mean, it looks like a state with like inbred incompetence running the state. And if, if you look at what you're seeing in Pennsylvania play out, I think that that makes perfect sense. That's what we're witnessing. But the other important thing here to note is you have this bombshell story from yesterday, and then you have the federal court story from yesterday, and the media is virtually, I would say, overwhelmingly, if not exclusively, looking at the district court case, which rejected a Trump provision, and ignoring this one. You know, I tried to, I Googled it looking for, for this. I could not find a story on this. N none. Couldn't find anything. The only thing I could find, Pennsylvania courts, was the district court case tossing out 
the Trump uh, proposal, or the Trump uh, attempt to get things changed. The actual decision by a Pennsylvania court saying that it looks like Act 77 is in fact unconstitutional, which would throw out all the mail-in ballots, is being totally ignored. And the only place you'll find it being discussed is, uh, well, I first noticed it on Twitter. Oddly enough, people condemn Twitter and complain about Twitter, but that's where I saw it. Now, maybe it'll get taken down. Maybe it's already down. But the last time I checked on Google, the mainstream media, there's nothing. There's nothing on what happened yesterday in Judge McCullough's court and the decision that she laid down late last night, which I think is far more significant to this Trump effort than anything going on you know, with, with the campaign itself. And I don't think you can read the state constitution, which is like this big, that controlling article takes about this much space. And then you could read the pages and pages of Act 77 and not think that they, they just changed the constitution uh, from the state house in Pennsylvania. And it may very well be tossed out. And that should be the story that the media is covering. But of course, that would make Trump look good, so it doesn't get covered. Let me know what you think. Have you seen stories in the mainstream media about the, the McCullough case? If you have, let me know. I haven't seen any yet. I'd like, like to see them and see how they write it up and how they're spinning it. Uh, if you got something out of the video, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Subscribe to the channel, punch that subscribe button if you can. And, uh, you know, until the next time, keep fighting.